All right, so we are going to be talking about um, shorthand electronic configuration, uh, which means that we need to go over how to do it longhand, re remind ourselves of that really quick, which means that we need to uh, look at the periodic table here. Um, so if we're going for um, our... <laughs> Sorry, my brain just went uh, uh, blank there for a second. If we're looking for electronic configuration, we are going to be using these numbers a lot. So if you don't have those on your periodic table, you should probably uh, have those in. We need to know that this is my S block with helium in there. This is my P block. This is my D block. D as in dog. And this is my F block. And then it's just basically counting after that. Um, let's put it out to the side here instead. So uh, we, we find the element that's electrons we want to get to. We're not looking at a, at a nucleus here, so I don't care how many protons there are. I'm totally looking at electrons. So if I have 17 electrons, I probably have a chlorine atom. But that's, I'm looking at the electrons here, so I'm just going to count to that. So I go 1, and then I'm in my S block, and there are two of them, so 1S2. And then I'm done with that row. All right, I go to the next row, 2S2 would be here. And then I go to the next row, and I'm still in my second row, so I go 2P6. Would be next. I'm done now with that whole row, so I go to my next row, 3s2. I'm done with that now, so I go to the element that I need, which is going to be to there. So I'd go 3p5. Okay, so that's how I would answer for chlorine. Let's do a bigger one. Um, because it starts, the D block and the F block have some little twists to them that we have to remember. Um, all right, so here it is. Let's uh, look and see if I have something like MT clear down here. All right, so we're going to start up here, and we're going to go 1S2, and then we're going to go 2S2, and then we're going to go 2P6, and this should all be written in order. I'm just showing you where uh, I'm getting these. Uh, 3S2 are these two blocks. 3P6 are these blocks. 4S2 are these blocks. And this is the monkey wrench that I was telling you about. The D block is lower in energy than the row it's in. So this is the fourth energy level, but it's only going to be in the third. So whenever you get to the D block, it's always one up from the period that you're in. Remember, these are your periods. Okay, so this is 3D10. Okay, and then we keep going, and we're back to the P, so this is 4P6. 5s2, and again, you would just be writing all of this out. This is why we have a shorthand that, uh, that we're going to learn today. 4d10, right here. 5p6 is right here. 6s2 is right here. And if you see this arrow here, this is pointing down here, that gap is left for us to tell us that that is where this F block goes. So we would put, in, so we would go to here next. And this is two higher than the period that we're in. So we're in period six, it's two lower than that, which higher or lower, however you want to look at it, but uh, lower minus wise. So it is 4F14. And I got the 14 because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And that's just how I got all of them. There's 2 in the S, 6 in the P's, 10 in the D's, um, and so on and so forth. So then we would go 5, D, 10. S, 
ST6. Seven S two five S fourteen and then we'd count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it'd be sixty seven. All right, so let's look at that with uh, our shorthand now, because it's much, much, much easier. Um with our shorthand what we see instead is, so we're going to go to this mountainarium again, um, is that we are only interested in the outermost electrons, the electrons that are on the outside shell that can interact with um, things around them. Um, so let's, okay, so the way that I'm going to, but we have to keep track of all of our electrons. So we can't just say, oh, well, that's this and, and uh, that's, you know, 5d7 and that's it. Because that, an electron from 1s2 might have gotten excited and jumped up to there. So we have to keep track of where all of our electrons are. So what we're going to do is we're going to say it looks exactly like the noble gas. These are all our noble gases right here. Okay. That's right above it. So I will go up one row and all the way to the end and start with whatever noble gas is on the end. So I would go Rn and I would put that in brackets and then I would just continue with the, the row that the element I'm interested in is on and so I'd go 7s to 5f14 uh, 67. Okay, instead of that whole long mess that we had before, that's the shortcut there. Let's do one more and then I'll call this one done. All right, so here we go. Let's look this time at um, tellurium. And let's say that it's not just tellurium, but it's tellurium with a two minus charge. Two minus means that it has gained two electrons. Electrons have negative charges, so if you gain them, you lose charge. It's backwards, I know. Um, so we've gained two. So even though I have a tellurium atom, its electronic configuration is gonna look like xenon. Okay, so we are actually looking at xenon now, even though tellurium is written. All right, uh, it is a noble gas, um, so, we, but we can't just write a noble gas and call it good. We have to uh, put what the valence electrons are. So we start with the krypton. We go up to the end, so we start with the krypton, and then we write this row out. So we would go 5s2, 4d10, 5 